early portrait paintings of Padmasambhava are relatively rare. Normally with painting subjects we divide we divide it up chronologically between early period, middle, and late. Now the early period, depending on the subject, can be 12th, 13th century, up to uh, 16th century, <clears throat> can be <clears throat> 16th century to, to 18th, and then 18th to, to the present time, but it all depends on what the subject is. So for Padmasambhava, we really have to uh, look at what are, are the early central figure paintings and what are the secondary? So we have, we have two divisions here. What is a central figure and what is a secondary figure? And this is important because we really don't get a lot of central figure Padmasambhava compositions until the 14th, 15th century, 16th century onwards. From the 14th century, we, we have uh, two examples, uh, two paintings, and from the 15th century, we also have two examples. Now, these depictions have really the standard um, figure of what we think of as Padmasambhava, with the lotus hat, um, seated in Vajra posture, holding a Vajra upraised to his heart, and in the left hand holding a skull bowl with a long life vase in the middle of the bowl, and a Katvanga staff leaning against the left shoulder standing upright. So this is really the standard appearance of Padmasambhava that we find even up to the present time. But what what is clear is that is that this really is how Padmasambhava was depicted from the thirteenth, fourteenth century and then and then onward. Now, central figures are relatively rare early on, but we do find quite a number of depictions of Padmasambhava as a secondary figure. And the earliest is probably 13th century, and it's in a, a, a Heruka mandala. Then we find Dorje Rabtenma. Now, Dorje Rabtenma, it can be associated with uh, Shalu, it can be associated with some uh, Kagyu traditions such as uh, Taklung and Drikung, uh, but we find Padmasambhava uh, in the lineage of the Dorje Rabtenma, which is a form of Sri Devi. Then we find a number of Avalokiteshvara paintings, um, often with the, uh, the eleven-faced thousand-armed, sometimes with the, uh, the Chaturbhuja, the four-armed Avalokiteshvara, and also with paintings of Amitabha as a central figure. Then we find depictions of Padmasambhava either in the lineage or as a, a, an attendant figure. Often, often the, the Padmasambhava in the Avalokiteshvara and the Amitabha is painted directly below the central figure. Sometimes you'll have a Amitabha painting, then below Amitabha is Avalokiteshvara, and then below Avalokiteshvara is Padmasambhava, showing this, this relationship. So, really Padmasambhava is, uh, is a little bit obscure in art, and so we really have to divide it up between, between central figure and then secondary figure, but understanding that the secondary figures are the earliest. Now, where does this come from? Where does this whole idea of depicting Padmasambhava come from? Well, we have to assume that it's it's uh, coming from lineage paintings, where where you have a central figure, but then you depict the lineage of teachers that that particular deity practice is coming from. But then we have to also look to teachers such as Nyangral Nima Oser. He's a uh, 12th century, uh, very much a Nyingma teacher, and then. Uh, after him, a little bit after him, is Guru Chowong. So it's really Nyangro Nima Oser that really developed uh, and began this cult of Padmasambhava and the deification of Padmasambhava. Um, some modern scholars believe it is uh, in um, kind of uh, in opposition to all of the new Sarma schools uh, or Sarma traditions that were coming into Tibet in the uh, 11th and 12th century, such as Kadampa, Sakya, Kagyu, Shangpa Kagyu, Jonang. These, it's in opposition to these. But we, we really don't, 
we don't have a lot of variation in the early Padmasambhava forms, which is very interesting. But what we do find is we find that the uh, where we have Padmasambhava as a central figure, then if we look to see what the secondary figures are surrounding, then in a number of these we find the eight main manifestations or forms of Padmasambhava. And then this points us directly back to Nyangro Nima Osar and Guru Chowam.